but it is a blessing to have you here this morning. All right, if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, right? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. <clears throat> and Brother Don said when he first came to church, the guy goes, you guys are cool. So we're not only we, we're great and good, but we're cool. Amen? <laughs> right, Brother Don? We're cool. <laughs> All right. Am I on? Huh? Okay. All right. First Thessalonians chapter 5. When you get a chance, to, we'll start in verse 11, read down to verse uh, 24. Uh, this portion of the scripture here is, is uh, Paul getting this church of Thessalonica ready, ready for uh, the coming of Christ. And so, what I want to share with you a little bit here, <clears throat> exactly, there's a verse I want to get to to help you a little bit to, to look at. Uh, each day being special, uh, each day to be get, self, get yourself ready, each day to prepare uh, to the very end of being faithful towards Him. Here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, starting in verse 11, the Bible says this, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together, and edify one to another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know that which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you. And esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now, that's pretty good, right? I mean, basically, what Paul Paul saying is, church, listen, just listen, keep encouraging each other up, but keep building each other up. Let's come ourselves. The Lord's coming one day. We're going to get out of here. Please, please. If there's, if there's quarrels and divisions and arguments among you, let's just get it done and over with, and let's move on. Basically, you know what I mean? He wants to. And as a as your pastor looking over, we, I want to do the same thing. We have bigger. Fish to fry, man. We got we got bigger problems we got to deal with in light of the scriptures, in light of the Bible, in light of of, of the kingdom of God, Amen. Of what we got to do for for the gospel's sake and for God. And it goes on here, but further look at verse fourteen. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient towards all men, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good. Both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. And everything give thanks for this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus concerning you. So everything that we saw that we just read from verse 11 down to there. These are all according to the will of God. Amen. That keeps unity. It keeps closeness. We keep encouraging each other. I'm praying for each other. Loving one another. It's, that's what God's will is. Because, listen, there's enough problems in the world today. We, as, as Christians, don't need to be uh, cause, being, doing things with, in discord. Uh, breaking up the family of God. Breaking up the th cause of Christ. Now, let's go a bit further here. It goes on in verse 19. Quench not the Spirit. Amen? If you've been to our prayer meetings on Thursday nights, what we've been, what we've been saying during prayer meetings on Thursday night is that we were, I'm praying this year in 2016. I know we're already in February, but can we please pray? Well, before you come to church every time, whether it's Tuesday night, Thursday night, Sunday morning, we need to pray for God's presence to move amongst us. Amen? And the Holy Spirit speak to our hearts every service. Every time you open that Bible every morning, we need to ask God for His presence to be known. We cannot quench it. There's many ways how you can't quench it. Maybe I'll preach that another day. But I'm going to tell you right now, we need to make sure that the Holy Spirit has free reign and God's presence can be known amongst us. We need God to meet with us every time we're here at Charity Baptist on a Sunday morning and Tuesday night and Thursday night. Amen? It goes on, uh, verse 20, Despise not prophecies. Approve all things, hold fast, which is good. We need for God to show clearly What's going on? Amen? Clear distinction in what God needs to do to change your life, to get you closer. We need to prove all things that they're true to the Word of God. We need to prove things to have, have God, uh, the Holy Spirit to move freely in your life. There's things that, that are in your life that are probably hindering. Now go a little further a bit. We'll, we'll keep on moving here. It says, uh, <clears throat> verse 22, Abstain from all appearance of evil, and the, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God... Your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved, blameless, uh, unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now here's our text, verse 24. Faithful is he that calleth you. Now I want you to stop right there. Many people think that only God calls those to be a pastor. 
or an evangelist or a missionary. No, 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 no. In the context of the scripture, it's not talking about an office of a pastor. It's talking about you as a Christian. We're all called to this thing. What do you mean this thing? The calling that you and I are called to is to represent Christ on this earth. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We are, a, we are a representative, an ambassador of heaven. We are a Christian. We are, we are his messenger of the gospel. We have the words to exhort and to build and esteem others. To the day that he comes, meets, we meet him face to face. We need to be all in this together. And it says here, faithful is he that calleth you, who, look at that, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all brethren with a holy kiss. We'll skip that one. I charge you by the Lord and that the epistle to be read unto, uh, unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. I don't know about the holy kiss, but we'll keep on, keep that one to the side, right? You ever see, I'm Italian, so a lot of our Italian folks to give us kisses on the cheeks all the time, you know? But I'm going to tell you this this morning. Can I tell you, look at, God called you and you don't even know it. As soon as you got saved and born again, you had, your identity was clarified. There's no more identity crisis for you. You're a child of God. You became the light of the world. You became the salt of the earth. You became a representative and ambassador of Christ. Someone looks at you and you have a message to deliver. When people read you and look at you, what kind of message are you giving off? But I want you to notice here in verse 24, faithful is he that calleth you. We all know that God is faithful, right? But where really lies the problem? Us. Are we going to be faithful to his calling that he gave us? Are we going to be faithful to what we need to do as Christians in this world today to do exactly what God would want us to do? I'm going to preach a message here about being faithful to the end. Meaning, I'm putting it, the, the, the responsibility in the lap of each one of us, okay? It's, not, it's in your lap in order for us to make the changes necessary or do the things we need to be doing that maybe we, were, we didn't know we were supposed to be doing. But there's, it's, it's, a lot of it's pretty simple. So I want to preach a message this morning to help you understand the need of being faithful to Him to the very end. Because you know what? Wouldn't it be great when we stand before God, right? When we stand before God Almighty. And we see that, that when we stand before God that, that we did exactly what God wanted us to do in the very end. Right to the very end. There's no controversy. There's no regrets. There's a song out there, I wish I could have done more, right? I, how they, I wish I would have given him more. And the thing is, you know what? I guarantee you look at your life, you probably have some areas that you probably could have given him more. More parts of your heart, more parts of your mind, more parts of your life. But I want to help you not to go about your life and have regrets when you stand before God one day and you wish you could have taken it back. I want to help you with that. I want to help you to be faithful to the end. I have never seen so many Christians put God to the curb and go on with their life as only for themselves. God's nowhere in the equation. It's all about their marriage without God. It's all about their family without God. It's all about their job and making money without God. It's about having fun in life but without God. And we're taught, and those are people that once were on fire for God, loved the Lord, and were such a blessing to others. And something came along the way where they forgot to be faithful to the end. I'm going to help you this morning. Father, again, Lord, I have no idea where this message is going to go, but please, I pray that you would bless this message. Holy Spirit, do the work you have to do in the hearts of each one of us. Lord, please help us be more committed and faithful to the end for your calling that you gave us down here on this earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, we all know that he is, amen? Now, I want to, for introduction, I want to share two verses. If you turn over to 2 Timothy chapter 2 here, 2 Timothy chapter 2, and uh, praise the Lord, the, the Super Bowl is in the evening, right? So we have to get out of here early to get to 1 o'clock um, game. I'm only kidding with you. <laughs> What's that? Joseph, Joseph, I can pray. I can, Joseph, I can preach to 5 o'clock. No, <laughs> you can take it up with him. I'm like kidding. 2 Timothy chapter 2, if you could. I was going to share with you an introduction. There's only like, like uh, four things I want to share with you this morning. So please uh, 
for the sake of time, I'm not I'm gonna give you the verse, you can write it down, but I might not go to it because we already know about all that. But here, I want you to help you a little bit about this thing called fable. Second Timothy chapter two and verse thirteen says this If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Does that talk about commitment? He's going to be committing to us, right? Second, Second Timothy, am I in Second Timothy chapter two? Huh? Oh, okay. Verse eleven. Okay. Woo, okay. Verse eleven. Verse eleven. Ready? Verse eleven. We'll start there. It is a faithful saying: For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we believe not. Yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. Amen? Amen. There you go. I, got, I want to read it. That's why I want to start to read it down the first 13. But it's, it's, let's think about it. So listen. He's there with us through anything. There has been times in my Christian life I should have stood up for God and I didn't. But he is still there for me. There was times where I knew that, that everybody was a gainsayer. Some of you know the, the start of this ministry was not a... A, a beautiful one, right? It was the first couple of years. But people sit there. Can I tell you something right here? I'm going to just let it all out. Ready? Yesterday was a beautiful time. Here was a man that, that cut me off for a while. Okay, the church because of the things that happened in the past. But can I tell you what was great? Brother Michael, what was great is that, that I was faithful to God's calling. I was faithful to God, what God wanted us to do here at, at Charity Baptist Church at 350 Austin. And he actually let me come and preach to his church. And he says, you've been so faithful down there, brother. I said, praise the Lord. Well, yeah, it wasn't an occupation. I didn't choose it as an occupation. It was a calling. But see, this is what I'm trying to say. The man doesn't have to say nothing. It's God that I really wanted to make sure I was pleasing. And now people are recognizing that it wasn't about a man and a church. It was about a calling and a need. The need for folks in the city of Buffalo to be saved and born again. Amen. Our, the mission field. Folks that need to hear the gospel. Someone that's going to stick it out to do. Be faithful to the calling. And make a difference for folks to get saved and born again. Faithful to the calling. You know what? People can say all they want, but I'm not going to deny Christ. I'm not going to deny the calling. You know what? And guess what? After time, people realize that. Like I said before, you probably, some of your family members think you're crazy because you're a Christian. You go Every Sunday you go to church. Yeah. What? But today's football. It's Sunday. Yeah, but I don't bow down to the, the pigskin. I don't bow down to my team and a worship old football team. I worship God. And God's in the church house and I'm going there on Sunday. Hallelujah. Amen. All right? So I'm just trying to tell you. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Praise the Lord, he's faithful to us, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, if you could. 1 <clears throat> Corinthians chapter 10. We mentioned this last week. Do you know when you have a hard time and you're dealing with something, you maybe you're not as strong as you think you are? Praise the Lord, God's with you. Because he is. You might not see him, you might not see his presence, but he's with you. Because why? Look at this promise he gave there. Paul shared this with this church in Corinth. It says in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is what? Ooh, God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. Now I want you to notice something here. A way of escape that you can bear it. Which means he's going to find a way escape, but it doesn't mean you're not going to avoid pain. Avoid pressure. Avoid a burden. I mean, you're gonna, but he's going to give you the strength of bear. So you might find an avenue to, to, to escape from, but you're still going to have to bear something with it. You know what I mean? There's still going to be a burden. There's going to be a heartache. There's going to be a pain along that way. Amen? So don't think, like, oh, it's got free. Okay, I'm going to let my guard down. No, you need to keep your guard up. You need to keep your biblical senses, this, this discernment, and you're going to have to bear it until it, it dif you know, go, disintegrates, dissolves. That that weight and burning, you get to learn to adjust, amen. Like lifting shingles up to, to lifting shingles up a ladder. Anybody, you know, some of you guys on roof, remember? If you're, listen, lifting a bundle of shingles on your shoulder is different than lifting a weight. Okay, I found that the hard way. 
My first day of being being a grunt. Yeah, a grunt. I was a grunt. Oh, you want to do roofing? Sure. Okay. See these thirty bundles? Get them to the peak. Thirty. Yeah, thirty bundles. So I did fifteen in the, in the before lunch, and I did fifteen after lunch. Okay. And then the last hour and a half was clean up and get ready to get out of there. Oh, there was muscles in my back. I never knew I had, Harry. There was. I, listen, I thought I had muscles here, here. There was muscles in my back. I never knew I had muscles. Yeah, I know. I know. That's all, that was it for that day. And then the next day was another 30 bundles. So I'm going to try to tell you, yeah. Listen, guy helps you bear it. Helps you be able to deal with the pain and adjust. And you might get a little uh, 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 workout to deal with the pain, but he'll find a way to escape. To be able to bear it and deal with the pain and the burden and the weight. Can I tell you, he's faithful to us. So what does it mean that we can be faithful to him? Here's a definition of faithful. It means to be steadfast. Or consistent in allegiance or affection towards. Faithful person doesn't waver. You can count on them. They're always there. Amen? Faithful, faithful, steadfast, consistent. That's how he is, right? Let me ask you a question here. But are we that to him? Where do we fall short? Where do we lack? Where, where can we improve him? Where, where, what can we ask God to, to help you get victory over? I'll tell you, listen. I don't know about you, but remember last, I mean, this whole year, <clears throat> my focus is more prayer for God to work. But I can, all I can do what I can do. You can only do what you can do, right? But I'm going to ask yourself this. Is there areas in your life you can be more faithful to God with? I don't know. But if you ask God to speak to your heart and ask God to examine your life, and you sit there and you have to make some decisions on to God, amen? It's between you and the Lord. But I know for a fact right here, I know for a fact this right here. Wouldn't it be great to have all our members at church on Sunday all at the same time? Right? If I showed you the membership roles of this church, well, this church would be full. It really, it wouldn't be honest with you, but they're not here. <laughs> they will be here next week because we got what? Food! Oh, that's how it works around here. Right? We, yeah, we do have food, but this is the no, dollar. We're only talking physical. I want, like, I want to thank you for being faithful when there's no food. It's the physical food. You come for the spiritual food. It's amazing how many say food, everybody shows up. If they have to crawl in, they'll be here. Oh, they're making meatballs. Oh, I'll be there and they'll. Uh, <laughs> oh, you know, don't be here. You know? I'm just trying to tell you, look at now. So let's look at our life. Our, it's the definition of faithfulness is really there. It's just a, listen, it's a blessing to be faithful. It, it's need to be faithful to God and his, and his, all that he has in store for us. Turn over to Proverbs chapter 17 if you could. Proverbs chapter 17. Look, look at God's word has to say about being faithful. <clears throat> Hope you're taking some notes. It's very important. Proverbs chapter 17 proverbs chapter 17 <clears throat> proverbs chapter 17 oh here's some pages going on look over here in proverbs 17 verse 17 a friend that loveth at all times and a brother is born for adversity a friend loveth at all times can i tell you can i share a little bit of a heartache for me I knew when God called me to be a pastor that part of the job description is to have a broken heart. You're always going to have a broken heart because people are going to hurt you. Things will happen where friendships will be destroyed. But a pastor wants to reach out and develop a friendship. And with friendship, we want to make sure that we, that we, we get a bond going. And you want to be faithful to each other. And, and you want to work out things. You don't want things to break a friendship up. As a pastor, it becomes one of the loneliest positions ever. Because, it's, because people have a hard time trusting a pastor that's an authority. But a pastor longs to have friendships. So that somebody they can trust and rely on to be dependable on. For the function of not only the cause of Christ, but the cause of the ministry. So I'm throwing it out there for you. This is a message for me and you today. What can we do, as me as a pastor of this church, to strengthen relationship with you guys 
that we can stick together to do great things for God. Think about that. Right? This is not a message about me. But it's a message that's needed. In order to really, truly do great things for God, we've got to have a trust. Right? I love when people t hold me accountable because then I know I'm on the right track. I have no problem with that. If you tell me, so I want to know. I'm an open book. I have an open door policy, remember? But I do that for a reason because I want nothing to be in the way of, of having a, a friendship develop and make it strong so we can move forward. I want to be there for you as much as I hope that you want to be there for me. Okay? And so the thing is here is that in the Bible here, we want to be faithful together to the end. We, as much as you need encouragement and support, so does the pastor. We can do that for each other. You hear another brother, I want you to step up and do, give another brother encouragement and steam him up because we need it. We're in this thing together, you know what I'm saying? How many agree with that? And we want to encourage each other to, to be uplifted up and encouraged so we can be faithful to the what? To the very end. Imagine standing before God and say, wow, you says, you know what? I want to praise the Lord that you are there for your fellow brother or sister in the Lord and you encourage them. Now, I'm not, I wasn't gonna, I'm not bringing up Sunday, but I brought something up on Thursday. And don't, don't you say anything. That we're trying to, we're going to try to do here this upcoming year. And I'm hoping that you'll be part of it. Because it, it, it's hard for one person to be there for everybody. But you can be there for somebody. And we can esteem each other. We can exhort each other and be faithful to the end. Because a friend is very important. Now, I know, listen, look up here. I have friendships that have hurt me. And I know you probably had friendships that hurt you. But I'm talking in the realm of spirituality. I'm talking in the realm of, of Christianity. I'm talking in the realm of the cause of Christ and serving God and getting the gospel out and getting us ready to stand before God face to face. That's what I'm talking about. Faithful to the end. Look up here. I want to help you. We need each other to pray for each other, love each other, edify each other, exhort each other, because guess what? It's lonely to battle it all by yourself. It is. You cannot do it on your own. I can't do it on my own. We all need each other. But most of all, we need God. And God has set a model here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 that we need to pray for one another. We need to love one another. We need to exhort one another. Stephen, why? Because one day we're going to get it. You saw that when we, in the context of our message. And, and as he's faithful to us, we need to be faithful to him. Amen? Am I, am, I, am I in my Bible? Is this all what I'm saying? Is this true? Please tell me I'm preaching wrong here, okay? Because I'm getting sick and tired of seeing these other guys that, that, like the Joel Olsteins and others, they got all this money and all they care about is your pocket. All they care about is getting their name in the paper. I'm more worried about eternal things. How we, how we, how we need to please God in this, in this little church, amen? If it gets big, praise the Lord. But I don't know whatever God has in store. But I know for a fact that we can do it together, amen? We can be faithful to the end. Uh, don't, you have to turn over, but Proverbs chapter 20, verse 6 says this, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. A faithful man who can we find? Hey, can I tell you, if you've been faithful to God, hallelujah, thank you. There's not many out there <laughs> because the things in this world have been dragging them out become castaways. If you're hey, thank you here. Hey, hey. Thank you for being faithful to this church right here, this ministry. You know why? Because this task is big. And one man can't do it, one woman can't do it all by we have to do it together. I'm pretty sure, let me tell you something. I'm pretty sure that the city and the community around us needs Jesus. And it can't be done just by one man, one woman, all right, even one church. But we can, we can try. We can start, right? All right? We could do, we could do greater things because we're here. Our doors are open. There's a place that they can go. Some of them are in a walking distance, right? Some are very close in driving. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being faithful. But I want to make sure we're all together here to the faithful to the end. We don't know when he's coming back. We don't know when we're going to check out. But I can definitely help you as a pastor make sure we're going to do it together. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for doing it at the end. I want to continue building it. Amen. Is that good? not a good thing? Hallelujah. You still love me? You still like me? Am I your enemy or your friend now? <laughs> don't get mad at me now. Okay. 
But in the Bible, we see that. For the sake of time, I'm not going to get to it. But we all know about, uh, in Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, Enoch was faithful. He was so faithful, so close to God, that he translated him up. Amen? Uh, turn over to Hebrews chapter 5. Uh, Hebrews chapter 5, if you could. Hebrews chapter 5. Hallelujah for the Hebrews chapter 5. Look at here. Hebrews chapter 5. There's a verse here talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. And here in Hebrews chapter 5, look what there's a statement here that was said here in verse 8. The key words obedience. Chapter 5, verse 8 says, Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. I don't know about you, come here real quick. Have you learned some things from previous friendships? Right? But can I help you with something? I want to help you with it. Listen, this is also hard for me. I want to trust and depend on people that are dear to my heart and then do great things with them with the Lord. That's a pretty good statement, isn't it? So what can we do to break down the barriers of trust, break down the barriers of fears, so we can be faithful together and faithful to Him and His calling to do great things for God for the cause of Christ with the gospel? That's the challenge I want you to think about. That's the challenge I want you to really get down to. Because listen, in order for this church to grow, in order for this ministry to do great things for God, there seems like there's been a hindrance of some sort. And I couldn't put my finger on it. And the Lord told me, it's because they don't take, because there's a, they don't realize that there's something that's stopping them to get closer to God and that calling and the calling of the, of the cause of Christ, which is my gospel. So what do you mean by that? So the Lord says, you know what? Start discipling them one by one. To fall in love with God and be faithful to Him first. Sounds right, don't it? Then the second thing is be faithful to the things that God has laid out to be edified and built up to the very end, which is what I'm trying to encourage. Meaning reading your Bible and praying, which you're going to get into, and do the basic things you would do outside the church at home. If all the Bible you're getting here is on a Sunday morning, shame on you. Because this pastor has not taught that. It's not laid out like that for, with God. It's different. You need to read your Bible every day and pray every day. When the church doors are open, please be here. Because all you're doing is harming yourself. Whew, it's quiet. You can hear a pin drop. Maybe God's doing something. I don't know. I want you to be faithful to the end, but we can't do it all by ourselves. Listen, we may not be, look at, we may not be a big church with all the bells and whistles, right? But we're definitely a church that has a heart for God. I would think we are, don't we? For stuff that we do here, we've been an encouragement to bigger churches for all that we do. We have a church for the heart for the people. I saw Scott Davis wrote on the, on the Facebook post yesterday about a church that's non judgmental. We, got, let's say we, don't, we can have discernment, right, Brother Mike? We can have discernment, but we're not judgmental. You know? We're really not. But we're discernful that we want to make sure that, that it's going to be a good spirit. We're going to be edifying. We're going to be caring. We're, I mean, that's what God wants, right? Amen. So I want to try to look at There's some examples in the Bible. We saw Enoch. We saw Jesus. Turn to Luke chapter 16. I want to hurry up here. Luke chapter 16. I want to help you to be faithful to the end. It's, you know, as a pastor, I don't want to stand before God and say, Hey, you messed up. You didn't, you didn't equip. You didn't inform. You didn't teach. You didn't preach. You didn't stir them up. You didn't tell them to be faithful to me to the end. Now they're drifting away in the world. They're drifting away the things that don't even pertain to me. Luke chapter 16 and verse 10 says this. Luke chapter 16 verse 10 says, He that is faithful and that which is least is faithful also much. And he that is unjust uh, and the least is unjust also much. If, th if therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? 
Verse 12, And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is in your own? Think about that. So there's a proven point. I had people come here in this ministry like, well, why, why won't you trust me with this? Because you're not trustful doing a little stuff. Can I tell you one of the greatest things? Look at it. It's not, how many of you saw me clean toilets? If I can't clean a toilet, why the heck am I up here preaching behind a pulpit? Right? It's not beneath me to clean a toilet. I do that because I, I want to do it because, you know, it's good for me to clean a toilet here in the church. You know why? Because if I can't clean a toilet, if I think that cleaning a toilet is beneath me, then I guess what? Pride's kicking in and I'm like, root, I'm hooting tooting with the sun, you know, one of these things, you know? Right? I don't mind. Look, I have no problem getting dirty. So I, I, I hate being behind it. I don't want to sit there and do nothing. But they, praise the Lord, some of you guys come and go, stop. Well, God, just, just hold that. So we'll sit down. Cut it out. Praise the Lord. You know, and then you got to yell at me. Good, good. Yell at me. You know, <laughs> because I thought I had to do it all. Right here, I thought I had to do it all. But if I, but, but in my fiber, I want to be faithful to the little thing. And if God starts working on my life, then you know, same thing with you. If God's, you, you got a responsibility that God gave you in a little thing, maybe God will bring you up and do great things for you for bigger things. But you got to show yourself faithful. Amen? And let me tell you, that's why the little things are, 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 are our importance, right? Those little things are our importance. Well, I don't got nothing. I'm not really... Well, listen, you need to be faithful to the little things. Listen, because those little things add up. And then it becomes a big thing. And one person can't do all those little things. It's important. It's a blessing. And entrust it. Listen, having the having the gospel in your possession is not a little. It's not a little thing. That's a big thing. You take a little track. There's a little pamphlet. That's a well, that's a very important thing to be handed over to a lost soul. Well, he's never going to get there. Never going to say who's that. The gospel is some, some great stuff. Heck, I was given a gospel tract, the only doorway. I took that thing home, I read it out, and I got saved. I was in church the next day. Don't tell me a, a gospel tract don't work. Oh, this is a little pamphlet. Yeah, just hand it out once. All I got was handed, I was handed it once to plant the seed, and then a second time before I got saved. Think about that. We have some great examples in the Bible about being faithful, don't we not? And man, Enoch, Jesus himself, he was entrusted with the, 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 the save the whole world. Um, the third thing is, is how, how, what are some ways that we can be faithful? Well, first of all, we need to be faithful to God. Look over to Luke chapter 10, if you could. Luke chapter 10. We can be faithful to God first. That's the most important. I hear some pages going. I'll wait for you to turn over there. But we need to be faithful to God first. Luke chapter 10, if you, if you could turn over to verse 27. The Bible says this. Luke chapter 10, and in verse 27, And he answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. That's probably the greatest commandment ever written. Amen? And it is the greatest commandment ever written. Can I tell you this morning that we need to realize that that's the whole thing right there. We need to be faithful to God with every part of our being. We need to be faithful to God because it's important that we do. Because you know why? Because we, when we stand before God one day, it's, it's not about this, that, and your thing. No, Pastor Cole told me that someone left the church the other, uh, the other day because there was a rip in the, uh, the rug and they tripped. That was their excuse to leave in the church because they tripped on a rug. Because they had to, you know why? Because they had to raise up the money to replace it. Right? We had some people leave the church because it was too cold. And we were going through the transition. I, I listen, if God could dump the money and get it done, we would have done it already, you know what I mean? But there's a transition. God has to provide. But what, what, it, well, what it is now is a test of our faith, right? See, see, watch God work. And watch our faith increase. Hallelujah. It's a blessing. Uh, we need to be faithful to God first. Another way you can be faithful is faithful in prayer. In Ephesians chapter 6 and in verse 18, the Bible says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. That's in Ephesians chapter 6. That's where the whole armor of God is. That's where the devil starts attacking you. 
to try to knock you off of being faithful, continue pressing forward. Amen? That's part of the whole armor of God in that, in that passage. Can I tell you, praying, you need to pray. Listen, prayer, when you're praying to God, that's where the great revivals happen. Because prayer was first. And the preaching of God's word was second. Because they complemented each other. You bathed it in prayer to prepare the hearts of the people. Then you preached and it was received. And God moved. We here at Charity Better Church got us our praying. And we got to stop playing church. Do you hear what I said? We have to stop playing church. We got to be, we got to start getting real with God. We got to start praying for God's presence in every Bible reading, every prayer time, every church service, every time the church doors are open. We got to pray for God to show up to do something great in your life and great in our presence. Why? So we, our faith can be increased and our love for Him can grow and our trust and confidence Him can be great. And so God can use us in a mighty way to see souls to be saved. But if we lose our hunger, we lose our thirst, we lose whatever, how in the world are we going to press on? We're going to get weary and well-doing and being religious. Which is going to be no good. Who can tell me what Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says? Go ahead, Nancy. Go ahead, Nancy. Go ahead. Not forsaken the assembly of ourselves in the manner of some members. Amen? Right? Why is, why is church so important? Who can tell me? Huh? Okay. Well, okay, we can learn out of your Bible at home. You can felt, you felt, you're almost there. It's hard having church at home. It's not about you. Do you know you're here this morning for somebody else? Do you know that? You don't know, realize that? Janice, was this good to see Mary in church this morning? Did it encourage you? Because she knows she's going what she's going through. It's good to see her this morning. Amen? Right? Mary Elizabeth, we, you had to work all the time on Sunday. And I, I didn't want you to lose your job. I prayed for a new job. So you could be in church every Sunday. Now you're here almost every Sunday, right? Hallelujah. It's a blessing that, that encouraged my heart. You know, amen? Right? Just think about it. You're here not for you. You're here for somebody else. You're an encouragement to someone else. You're here to esteem one another, exhort one another. You're here to be a blessing to someone else because you're, you're helping us get ready to go out in this world after we get done. To be something for God with that gospel message. That's why we have adult Sunday school class. That's why we have children's Sunday class. That's why we have 11 o'clock hour. You know why? Because we're trying to get you prepared and focused on God throughout the week. For a sake of time, we got to be careful because, listen, I have never seen anybody. Look up here. There's three things. You want to drift away from God? I'm going to help you how you can get away from God real quick. I'm going to help you. Ready? Stop reading your Bible first. Stop praying number two. And then stop going to church. Did you get that? And you'll be, you'll be a casualty. Of the, you'll be a casualty. You will. I don't, you can't, no one can tell me otherwise. I've been saved for 27 years. And everyone I know that has stopped reading their Bible and fellowshiping with God and praying with them every day and stopped going to church has fell away from the Lord. And it breaks my heart. And, these, and many of them are, are on fire for God. Doing great things for God. Can I even give you one? I'm going to go one deep deeper now. Don't you know, get mad at me now. But even before that, they stopped giving. I'm not talking about money. Giving themselves over to the Lord first. But we, didn't we just read in Luke chapter 10, verse 27? What did they say? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, right? Right there is it. When you stop giving yourself to the Lord every day, then the reading stops, then the praying stops, then not going to church stops, and then serving Him stops. You see what we're getting at? There comes a snowball effect, a domino effect. Because it all started for not giving yourself over to Him. Because when you give yourself over to Him, you're going to want to read Him, read about Him. You're going to want to spend time with Him. You're going to want to go to church to be in, in, involved with, in church to, to hear His Word and be amongst each other, amongst, amongst the, the family of God and doing great things for God and find a way to a desire to serve God. Hey, what can I do? Hey, there's some things going on. I mean, look, at, there's, there's opportunities, but the thing is, if you're not ready to do anything for God, then I will tell you. But we're, listen, 
History is repeating itself. Many are falling away from the faith because they lost it from their heart. You know I know that, Brother Mike? Because when you go to the book of Revelation, right? They have left their first what? They left their first love. And it started with the heart condition. Something distracted them. They fell in love with something else. Could be self, could be money, whatever. And that relationship with the Lord has been hammered in 1 Peter 4 or whatever. But there's blessings. There's a blessing if you stay faithful. Turn over to Psalm chapter 3. I'm going to show you two verses. We'll close. Because it's starting to get thick in here. Can you, can you, can you, sense, can you sense the thickness in here? Psalm, Psalm chapter 31. Psalm chapter 31. I'm going to show you two verses in the book of Psalms. Say, so what are you trying to say this morning, Pastor P? What are you trying to say this morning? I don't want you falling away from God. I don't want you to be distracted of the things of God, and I want you to stay focused. Don't let the world's burdens and the world affairs distract you on the path that you're going. But in Psalm chapter 31, look at verse 23, some of the blessing it is to stay faithful. Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth his, the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. Amen? <whistles> he preserveth the faithful. He preserveth the faithful. Amen for that, right? I don't know about you, but I want to be seasoned and, and, and seasoned and seasoned and preserved. And, and all that kind. I'm not talking about we're formaldehyde, amen? Like, you know, I'm talking... <laughs> I, I'm talking preserved to the end. I want to make sure my mind's fixed on God. My, my life's fixed on God right to the very end. Amen? Psalm 97. We'll close with this. Psalm chapter 97. I want you to look at this last verse here. Some of the blessings of being faithful to God. Psalm chapter 97. And I want you to look at verse 10. Psalm chapter 97 and verse 10 says this. Ye that love the Lord, what do you need to do? Hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the what? If you stick it out with the Lord, he's going to preserve you. Which means you won't be a casualty of circumstance. You won't be a casualty when the world's enticing you, or your flesh rolls up, or your start, sin is being uh, tossed in front of you, you don't fall to temptation. Hey, can I tell you this morning? The Lord loves you. He's been faithful to you. Now it's time for us to be faithful to Him. Amen? Amen. This morning... It's time to, you ready to look up here? It's time to break down the barriers of trust, break down the barriers of self, and start being faithful to him to the very end. Amen? Amen. Is it not encouraging when you see the whole place filled up? And people working together for the cause of Christ, right? You see, see the church family getting together doing great things. Isn't it great? I don't know about you. Can I, can I, I'll give you one little thing. We'll pray. We'll, We'll sing Amazing Grace first and last, okay? But look at When we went ahead and did that outdoor service the last Sunday of August, how many remember that? Wasn't it exciting? What a perfect time to bring everybody together to do something great and people recognize. Like I was, went downstairs to me and Michael saying, even during that, Don, people were driving by and go, oh, I didn't know it was a church. See, this building's been here for 100 years. He did Don's Gilly. He lives three blocks down the road and didn't know this was a church. I don't, I'm, I'm telling you, we're going to have to get a neon sign. We're going to put a neon sign and go, Charity, Baptist, Church, come now or come later. You know, whatever, I don't know. You know what I don't know what to do. You know, the bugs will be flying around and the fleas and getting zapped and all that kind of stuff. We'll get the two in one, all right? I, I just, is this, you know, but the, the funny part is, is this. Is that it brought the church together. Everything we did with those things, right, Harry? Projects and events. But that was an evangelistic thing. And we're going to do it again this, this August. But what a great time. There was no issue of trusting anybody. We worked together for the cause of Christ. The gospel got out. People have been ministered to and been uplifted. Amen?